Florida State, I think no matter if it's Daniels or Nussmeyer, Florida State has the better quarterback in this game, which it took me a while to come to that conclusion this week, but I think that's true, that Florida State has the better quarterback, which is interesting, not a place we're accustomed to being. But I think for this week's specific matchup, that's not nothing. That matters significantly, especially when you're talking about both offensive lines likely struggling against the opposite defensive front. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I'm not in love with the Jaden Daniels I saw play at Arizona State at all. I thought he was average at best. And, you know, he has certainly the ability to to get out of trouble. He can move. So can Jordan Travis, obviously. Jordan Travis can really move. Um, But but neither are elite throwers. Uh, I do think. Uh, Jordan's taking a step up in that in that uh, category. So let's just see how big a step up. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be critical that if you get an opportunity uh, to get Jaden Daniels, excuse me, on the ground, that you do so because any extra time bought for those receivers is a huge problem for Florida State's defensive backs. Frankly, I'd say that for any set of defensive backs facing this group of LSU receivers. So it's not even specific to what FSU is rolling out there in the defensive backfield. It's specific to everybody LSU will play. They have very good receivers, including an elite receiver. And if you give those kinds of guys times, you get, you get beat for big plays. There's just no, that's, that's what it means to have a good receiving core. We know that. I mean, we've seen it here historically. It hadn't happened in a while, but we've seen it. Sure. But what would it surprise you if in the course of this game, they go to commercial break and the analysts are saying, man, it's another missed throw, they had an opportunity there. And, and Daniels just couldn't hit it. Well, here comes Nussmeyer. Here comes Nussmeyer. All right. They're going to give him a crack at it because it feels as though something like that is coming. It's disjointed. It's a week one. We're giving the quarterback credit because of Brian Kelly, I think, for LSU. We're thinking more about the scheme and the receivers, but it's almost as though we're not talking about specifically the quarterback. Maybe it's because he didn't declare which individual it was going to be, definitively Brian Mm -hmm. Kelly. But either option is not great. And usually we talk about the quarterbacks a ton. Well, I think I've been burned on this front, though. I well, know Jack it was. Cone. Yeah, well, Jack Cohn looked like Jesus at quarterback last year against Florida State and really kind of butt sorry against everybody else. So it was kind of, all right, well, there's the Jack Cohn I thought we'd see and <laughs> dropping dimes. Well, yeah, it's I not mean, like he was huge in, in the numbers department because there were coverage busts outside of the one to the tight end to begin the game on fourth down. Some of the throws he were making were into buckets that he just was not hitting at any back, other point. That back corner throw in the end yeah. zone for the time. It was a ridiculous throw. I'm but, like, okay, really, Jack Cohn? Mm-hmm. Your butt year round, but tonight you're going to be great. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's frustrating. So. If he was Jack Cohn that night, we win the football game. Probably. Probably. Uh, that was unlucky. But it's an outlier. <laughs> there have been a lot of, a lot of guys had themselves some nights against Florida State. Uh, I need to. I need to. I need to Not see. Sam Howell. I need to see. No, well, Sam Howell couldn't beat us. Florida State. Uh, well, for that matter, the head coach there at North Carolina can't beat us ever. It's just the the frustration mounts for that guy. But we're not facing either in this game, and we are facing Brian Kelly, who has uh, beaten us each of the last two times he's played us. And here we go again. So we'll we'll see. I'm not saying that they've won solely because of that. They've had better players, better teams, better continuity, all of that. Uh, I just. There are there are areas that you're right. Florida State can exploit in this game, and I sure hope we get off to a good start. I there's a path to this thing becoming very interesting pretty quickly. Meaning, if LSU is slow to start because it's the first game, because they didn't get a tune-up game, because there are communication issues and guys aren't on the same page, and you know you go from scrimmages and practices to a game, especially a game not against a Duquesne, but rather one with, you know, division one athletes that can run your timing can be off. It can be, it could be a little quick for you. And if that turns into a mistake or two and Florida State gets out to a lead, we talked about before the season began, because I thought the defense would hit the ground running and be a better version of anything we saw last year, those last eight games being more of an indicator of what we'd see to see to start this year, you get out to a lead and dictate terms there. Yes, that could be fascinating. Florida State could really put a lot of pressure uh, on LSU very quickly. There is that scenario. Now we're battered and bruised, and 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 we've been covered up. You know, we're 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 just hands up, hands up. It's hard for us when you even begin to say aloud the scenarios that could really favor Florida State in this game because 
things have gone so poorly, you won't allow yourself to think about prosperous times until you're draped in them, until it's all around you. It's hard to accept because to do so sets you up for real heartbreak. And nobody wants to do that. So I'm admitting there's a little of that in me this week, that every time I think of the game and I, when my mind races, it doesn't race towards the positive. It doesn't race towards the avenue of Florida State's up by 21 in the second half. Instead, it points to all the things that I know are weaknesses with this team, that if they get, and that's a big I and a big F, if they get exploited to the max in the first half of this game, the potential for here we go again hits you really hard in your brain when you're doing the game, you're playing the game out, and you're going through the different scenarios. And it's that is the it's the beaten and battered football fan in us. It really is. And how could we not be? I mean, it'd be nice to have a winning season to fall back on around these parts lately, but we don't have one. No, not even close, really. Um, last year, Jacksonville State, that means it's not even close. The key for me in this matchup, though, for Jordan Travis and, and the offensive line is it's Mason Smith against the interior. And I feel good, even though we have no idea with center. It, it's Maurice, it's Darius, Dylan played last. I mean, who knows? I, I'd set the over-under on two and a half different dudes snapping the ball on Saturday just based on last week alone. But one thing Brian Kelly talked about this week in his press conference, and I think they're going to do this defensively, what's the key against Jordan Travis? He said, keep him in the pocket. So if they're going with that plan of contain, that actually takes a little bit away from the pass rush on the edges because they're trying to keep Jordan in the pocket throwing the football. All right, well, now it becomes a matchup of the interior. Can you hold up against a Mason Smith who had four sacks in nine games as a freshman last yeah, year? Yeah, I mean, he's Jesus. really, really good. Right. Yeah, they've got three but, guys down front that are really, really good. Yes, yeah, Smith but, and uh, and Roy and Gay and right. the Wingo kid can play. Yeah. But when we're talking about the front four against Florida State's five, if their plan is truly to play contain, then the edge pressure shouldn't be as prevalent because that's not their goal. Their goal is to make him stay where he is, not flush. Yeah, well, then you get into the question that I asked before the season started. We're better at wide receiver. How much better? Can they win one-on-ones? Because last year they schemed open all kinds of one-on-ones. None of the receivers could win one-on-ones, so it didn't make any damn bit of difference how well you called the game. You're going to get opportunities. Most teams are going to do what you're talking about. Most teams are not going to let or they're going to, to try to keep Jordan Travis from beating them. I mean, when you have an obvious talent like that as a runner, you cannot let that guy beat you with his feet. That's the known. You know, Make him beat you with his arm. So I think a lot of teams are going to try to take that away. Clemson took it away. LSU's going to try to take it away. It's hard to, though, given it, it's if, hard. if you've it's got hard. agile interior linemen that you can pull and, and roll the pocket. I mean, we've seen that scheme. They ran it last week. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new. Right. It's, it's something Mike does. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do because of his speed and because of the scheme we're running. But I wonder if part of – the scheme might not be, all right, you know what? If they want to negate their advantage on the edges against our tackles, go ahead. Let's play contain, and then we'll see if we can run traditionally and, and you know, look at the perimeter for quick screens and things <laughs> like that. And let's test whether or not their defensive backs can hold up because we're better at blocking on the perimeter. Be exciting to find out. I'd love a game with a relatively clean pocket for Jordan Travis to prove how much better he is as a passer with some one-on-one -on -one situations. Uh, this is a big day for Jordan Travis, a big night for Jordan Travis on Sunday, uh, a huge night. Uh, you're, you were were you given the reins completely. You were told it's your team and nobody's else, nobody else's. It was confirmed on Saturday when your backup came in. Uh, you are the guy. And if you're going to take a huge leap forward and become a guy that the fan base trusts and your teammates believe in week to week, and you're proving yourself to be the player you think you are, and every good player thinks he's great, right? You, you have to. Then these games are the games you win. You just said it. I mean, Florida State has the better quarterback in this game in all likelihood. I think that is true in all likelihood. Go go do that. Go prove that. If, if both defensive lines are going to carry the day, which quarterback makes plays, buys time, makes the throws necessary to put you in a good position?